All right, all right. Are we rolling, rolling, rolling? I think we are. Shout out to everyone. Sorry about that. I had a little bit of a technical difficulty before I started. And I didn't mean to make you guys wait a few extra minutes. But we are live. I think, right? Are we live? I'm going to wait for this thing to, to go live before I can actually say that we're live. But I think we are. There we are. There we go. Shout out to everyone out there. Welcome. Welcome back to another question. Welcome back to actually the last question of today. Um, but again, um, a question nonetheless. <laughs> what? What are you saying, bro? Bruh. Anyway, sorry. I don't write the scripts, all right? It's Lambo's fault. You know, anything that goes wrong in the show, it's always his fault. All right? So just FYI, all right? Shout out to everyone out there. Um now today's question was brought to us by David. All right, shout out to David out there. Um, asked me this question, wanted to know more details on, on what's going on with all this. Now you know it's a deep dive. All right, we got a lot to talk about when it comes to this. And um, you know, again, you, you know, you, you guys, a lot of you guys always want the short answer, short, quick answer to the question um and some of you guys want the super long complicated you know hey get, get, give me as many details as humanly possible jose question answer so that's what we're gonna do you know we always give you the long complicated you know answer but you know to answer it briefly quickly you know our real estate land developments in the yucatan a good investment depends at <laughs> so no but yes it really does depend on many many factors and uh some are great some are good some are horrible lots of them are scams and uh you know the reason i'm making this video is because this video is something that's kind of like very unique i mean this sorry this question this problem this situation is very unique to this state this region of mexico right now at this moment in fact it's very um, well known all across Mexico because remember, I, I, me and my wife travel, you know, we've uh, been to like Mexico City, Oaxaca, and so on and so forth. She is an artist, a painter, so you know, I travel with her. I don't always record everything. Um, but you know, we got friends, we got people in other parts of Mexico, and uh, you know, when we, when we talk, you know, a lot of them, you know, they're always making fun of the whole idea of uh, you know that even them, even the typical Mexican, the whole idea of buying a plot of land in the Yucatan so that they can, you know, um, have a little nest egg, something for their retirement that they can eventually build on and eventually have a retirement home on the beach in one of the most desirable locations in all of Mexico. Um, that's, that's a thing with Mexicans as well. It's not just a thing with you guys in the audience right now. It's everyone. And so obviously, you know, this area, um, of the, you know, this area of Mexico, the Yucatan has seen a giant boom, a ginormous boom in recent years and recent decades. But, you know, in the last decade, in the last like five years, six years, 10 years, really, you know, it's been a big boom. And, um, you know, a, a lot of the boom has been a speculative boom um, that has come, you know, um, with a lot of the real estate investments, you know, that are, you know, being laid all around uh, the, the state. And so with that being said, you know, there's a lot of people out there that are uh, taking advantage of this, you know, um, some of them actually providing you with a product, you know, whether it's the land, the home and all this other stuff. If you guys watched the video that I did on Sunday, um, you know, the the, the, the home tour that I here I'll show you real quick the home tour that I did with David and uh, and uh, Dora um, okay right here okay um, th th so in this in this video you know you guys can watch it on my channel later on but in this video when we did a tour you know of um, of their home of the privada of the whole area you know this was an uh, 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 sorry this was a land development project way back in the day so David bought a piece of land okay they developed it and they turned it into that home you know that they live in and you can watch the whole video so you can get more details and again you know we do a tour of the home the neighborhood and talk to them um have a big interview with them a long interview with them as so you can see more and they can tell you more about all that but but long story short you know just getting back to what we were talking about here you know uh, is it a good idea yeah it depends on who you are depends on your situation depends on what kind of land development who um you hire as a lawyer to make sure that you you know you're not getting scammed um to make sure that you are you know again it, it, this is not your home country so you got to really really be very wary you know be very um 
you know, you get a, uh, what is it like, check every single thing, you know, um, your, uh, you know, the contract, you know, again, you not just have one lawyer, maybe have two lawyers, but you got to make sure you know what you're doing. So many off the grid. So right now, shout out to Pat. I see Pat in the chat right now. Pat in the chat. Shout out to you. But anyways, um, yes, there's many off the grid properties as well. And so you got to like, for example, I remember during the pandemic, okay, me and Christian, look, every single person during the pandemic, we dealt with this very differently. You know, how me and Christian dealt with it was that, you know, hey, we didn't want to be around civilization. We're like, all right, you know what? Let's go out to the middle of the jungle. Let's see if we can kind of make that work. You know, live in a village, live with the people. Hey, we don't know what's going to happen with the future. I would rather, you know, uh, be on the side of caution and just start learning how to live off the grid, you know, and live off the grid. You never know what's going to happen, yada, yada, yada. So we were in that mentality and, uh, you know, not that I have a lot of money, um, but I, I had enough resources as to where I was like, okay, you know what, maybe we can afford a piece of land in the middle of the jungle and let's look into it. So once we were looking into it and we went down that route, we quickly realized, we quickly realized, oh my God, yeah, no wonder this is so cheap because yeah, you can just get a piece of land in the middle of the jungle, but you need a road that you got to build. You need electricity, you need water, you need, you need all these things. And when you start adding all that up, you're like, oh, yeah, we can't afford this. Not only can we not afford it, but do you really want to live in the middle of the jungle by yourself? With no, 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 you don't. No, you don't. No, you don't. Okay? I don't. <laughs> I didn't. We didn't. You know, once we started looking into it, you know, and so like we, we went on. So we were looking into that. And then as we were looking into that, we realized very quickly this is probably not a good idea. And then we were thinking to ourselves, you know what, let's at least like uh, have our lawyer, again, Jose Novello, you want his information, he can be your lawyer too, all his information is in, uh, you know, on my website, in the YouTube videos, and so on and so forth, you know, he's appeared in many videos um, as well on the channel, so you can see him, and uh, he's answered your questions, and so on and so forth, but with that being said, you know, we, um, we, we we said to ourselves, you know what, let's have Jose look over this anyway, look over the paperwork, you know, to make sure if it's legal, hey, maybe it not, might not be a bad idea to put it in our back pocket, worst case scenario, maybe we can just buy the land and just let it sit and maybe, you know, sell it in the future if we don't develop it, whatever, right? Um, but when he was looking into all the paperwork, he's like, yeah, no, dude, this is, uh, you know, it's it's as real like, for example, like it, everything looked real until he was actually checking everything in the registry and he was actually checking the contract and checking the land and checking all that. But when we started checking everything, it was a scam. Like, crap. Whatever. All right. Whatever. No big deal. We were not really that interested in buying that anyway. So we started looking in villages. We started looking in other places, you know, for a similar situation. And... You know, it was one thing after another, you know what I mean? Where, you know, you, you found a piece of land, but then there was like 15 family members fighting over the piece of land. Yeah, good luck with that. Or, you know, uh, another piece of land that was great, but then the guy wanted triple what the original price was. Whatever. You know, I can go on and on. And so long story short, before we knew it, we didn't have any more resources anymore. Because again, if you guys have been following me and my channel for a long time, you guys have, you know, known that we had a rough year last year and, you know, Basically, all of our savings, every single penny that we had went down the drain um, because, you know, medical expenses, life, you know, whatever, no big deal. But long story short, hey, that money was going to go for that property. Get Good thing we didn't spend it on a property because we needed it for an emergency. But long story short, all I'm saying is that, you know, we were never able to really buy a property. Not that we weren't looking. It's just that every single time that we were looking into whether it was a plot development or just a piece of land or someone selling a property. And we actually went through all because we went through every single due diligence humanly possible because I, you know, don't have many resources. But one of the resources that I do have is, again, is, is a badass, amazing lawyer. And we're basically really good friends. I mean, we go to baseball games together, yada, yada, yada. We're, we're just friends, okay? And so th that's why I have him on the show and all these other things because he is someone like me that is really there to help you out. And, again, if you want to hire his services, great. If you don't, great. It doesn't matter. But why, why can we not still help you guys out and provide information for you to you know, to, to be more well-versed on all this. So long story short, I have him as a resource. So I, I wasn't worried about every time that I found some land, having him and his team and his, you know, his whole uh, um, lawyer group, what's it called? Like his firm look over it or whatever. Um, 
because uh what was it yeah sorry i lost my turn of thought oh yeah every time i found a piece of land i would have him and his firm look over it um because i knew again as a friend he was going to help me out with that i really didn't have to pay for that you guys will but long story short um you know as friends you know we help each other out in that sense and so um every time that we were looking into it every single freaking time man he was always coming back with disappointment like yeah man i'm sorry you know what i mean like boom you know it, it doesn't appear in the registry or you know these people are wanted for stealing money or you know whatever it was always something and again the it, for, at least for us the you know the luck was not in our in our favor you know the cards did not fall in our favor so we were just not able to buy some land um and again thank god that we had jose to look over all this and yes we were very disappointed we were not able to buy anything um even the smallest piece of land with not you know just a few you know bucks but the point is is that you know, we were actually, you know, um, we would have been more disappointed if we would have been spending some money on one of these things and it would have been a straight up scam and we would have been out money and out a dream and so on and so forth. So what I'm trying to get at here, you know, you know, what I'm trying to like really convey here is that, you know, if you do your due diligence, you do your homework, you know, you go out there and you put some work into this, um, then yeah, you're, you're, you're going to be fine. You know, there's going to, there's tons of investments, you know, all over the Yucatan, which are great investments, but there are tons of others that are pure scams. They're not any good. And if you don't know what you're dealing with, well, you're going to just be out money and you're in a different country and there's no um, way for you to get that money back, if you know what I'm saying. All right. So th that's these are the things that you have to deal with right now. And again, I don't want to single anyone out because that's not what I do on this channel. But right now, you know, you can simply go online and you can find hundreds of, of companies or development companies. Uh, companies you know that are out there you know doing you know selling you land selling you you know um ideas selling you investments selling you um you know again hey you know they'll simply say hey we got this huge plot of land in the middle of the jungle here and we are you know gathering up as many investors or as many people that want to buy the land now so that we can gather up that money so that we can use that money pull it together so that we can build the development so right there, that's a big red flag. Another red flag is that, you know, a lot of the Yucatan is protected environment. And a lot of the Yucatan doesn't even belong, it's not for sale. It belongs, you know, whether it's, it's um, it belongs to the people as like ejidio land or it is protected land or I could go on and on, you know, um, where, you know, they're not going to be, you know, they can't, they cannot build or develop on these things, but... It doesn't mean that they cannot sell you the idea, that they cannot sell you this whole thing. So, again, remember, Mexico is a different country. So, you know, they can sell you um, the development and they can sell you the idea. They can sell you all this stuff. Um, but whether or not they can build there, that's another story. And then, you know, by the time you figure that out, it's going to be way too late and you're not going to be able to get your money back. You're not going to be able to get your investment back. So, you know, there's so many things like that. So you got to make sure you got to do your homework. You got to make sure that you know what you're doing. If you're going to be like, for example, like in the case of Dave and Dora, which I was talking about earlier, I showed the video and so on and so forth. In the case of them, for example, you know, you can simply, I mean, sorry, what they did is that when they were buying their land and they were buying you know, that development, not only did they have a badass lawyer to represent them and make sure that it was a real thing, but another thing is that again, it was it was a, an, a, sorry, it was a development that was already being developed. They didn't need you know necessarily Dave and Dora per se, you know what I mean, or just like other people, you know, to buy right then and there. They were building that development, like it or not, you know, there was already investors that were building that development. And again, it was close enough to the city, you know, where of course it was going to get developed. It's the city's right there, you know, com compared to, you know, as opposed to like some of these other developments that are like in the middle of the jungle, literally. There's no roads, no water, no electricity, no nothing. That's not the case with a lot of other developments that are closer to the city. You know, um, whether they're a privada or not a privada, all right? You know, meaning whether they're a housing development or not. You know, remember, some developments, you know, are just open, you know, just selling you land. So you can build a home and live like a, like a regular Mexican or you can live in a... In a in a privada, you know, what is it like in a housing uh, situation, an HOA type thing? But 
the point I'm making is, is that this is something that you need to do a lot of homework in and something that you need to really look into and you need to hire the right people. Again, I'm, I'm not telling you to hire Jose. I'm just telling you, you know, that's who's helped me, who helped Dora, who's helped a lot, Dora and David, who's helped a lot of you guys out there in the audience already. And, um, you know, he is like me, you know, in the sense that he's going to tell you the truth, you know, whether you like it or not. And uh, and this is why he is great, because he really does all the homework and he makes sure that, you know, you are you know, uh, well protected. Okay. That's his job. Um, but what I'm saying is that, you know, in the case of like Dave and Dora, what they did is that, you know, they were already investing in a, in an area, in a place that was already being developed. It was already being uh, built and grown and all this other stuff. So that's why they were able to not only get in for a really good and cheap price, you know, affordable price compared to what they're really worth. Um, but they were able to, you know, do uh, more custom work and they were to do a bunch of other things because when since they went into that development early you know they had you know um more um uh what you might call choices when it came to you know how they wanted to build their home so like i said you know there's a lot of pluses negatives you know there's all kinds of things you know as to you know going in on a property early um you know again from the ground up if you're just buying a piece of land and building from the ground up like they did or you know in the case of like if you're gonna buy a piece of land in the jungle you gotta make sure you know what you're buying because again let's say that you're buying a piece of land um that's in the jungle but it's basically a stone to throw away from a village well then guess what it's very different because you're right by the village the land probably belongs to that village or that municipality out there in the jungle and so immediately you're going to be have you know you're going to be able to get or have a, or sorry be able to get or already have access to water electricity um internet and i can go on and on roads even they, they might be dirt roads but they're roads so you got to keep that in mind as well. And you got to remember also what it's going to be like to live out there. Um, as, uh, you know, um, someone in the chat says, Charles, Charles, in the, in, was it Charles? No, Pat. Pat was saying there's a lot of many off the grid properties as well. So there's a lot of people out there that are selling the idea of off the grid living. You know, again, remember, there's a lot of things going on in the world. You know, a lot of people are trying to, you know, get away from all the insanity and, and so on and so forth. And many people take things to the extreme. And so a lot of people are like, all right, you know what? We're going to do um, what, you know, the American dream is. is like we're just going to go out to the middle of nowhere and we're going to set up a, a village or set up a community of like-minded individuals that follow a certain, um, you know, certain set of rules or a certain lifestyle or what have you. And we're going to build our own thing out here. So there's tons of those, you know, there are also a bunch of those. And a lot of these are, you know, um, created by foreigners. All right. And, you know, some of them can be a little cultish. Some of them are just regular housing developments. Some of them are scams. But you got to look into it as well. And you got to see what's out there. But remember, Mexico is a free country. So, you know, if somebody if I, if if somebody wants to um, or a group of people want to go out there to the middle of the jungle, buy a lot of land, create a community, create a whole thing and do whatever they want, they can. They can do it. No problem. No government is going to get in the way. You know, the government might just come knocking on the door one day. Hey. Hey, you got your taxes? That's it. Other than that, whatever. You know what I mean? They don't give a crap what the hell you're doing out there. All right? So um, that's why a lot of people are doing these things out here. So um, you're going you're gonna to be seeing a lot of that as well. And you got to be careful with that as well. Because let's say that you buy um, some land in one of these communities and, um, you know, you're all happy about moving there and all this other stuff. And then when you get there, you find out they're a cult or you find out that they have rules that you don't want to follow or you find out that it was a scam or you find out that the people forget the forget the scam. You know, they just don't know what they're doing and they just, you know, they, you know, take your money. And, and for lack of a better description, they, they run, you know, they just, you know, they sp they mal. They, they don't spend your money correctly and before you know it, you're out money and uh, you don't have any land and you have no uh, legal recourse, you know, for you to get back your money. So the reality is, is that, you know, this is, is a problem that everyone is dealing with because, um, I, I, man, I'm telling you, you know, um, there are uh, this 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 whole thing of buying land out here, um, developing this area of Mexico. This is something that a lot of people around the world know of. And it's funny when I always hear like... Uh, Oh, it's just a few expats and a few foreigners that are coming out here and they're messing everything up. It's like, man, if people, you know, people really educated themselves and they saw exactly who's actually coming out here. Um, it's a lot of other Mexicans. There's a lot of other, you know, foreigners from all over the world that are coming out here. Um, 
and they're really really building this place up very quickly and so again you know just like you would see in florida just like you would see in other parts of the world you know there's a lot of people that are trying to take advantage of the situation good bad ugly in the middle everything and so you know some of these developments you know they you might buy the land they build your home they do everything and then before you know it you move into your new home and the new development and there's no water or there's flooding or the electricity is not working or they have no internet or you know because they just build it so quickly they're just trying to get the money they're trying to get whatever and before you know it yeah you know you, you're screwed i don't know what else to say so you know, there's a lot to think about. You know, there's a lot to really do your homework on. You know, you got to make sure that you know what you're doing um, and th th do not take this lightly. And, um, you know, depending on you, the individual, um, will depend on your situation and how you're going to look at this and how you're going to deal with this and whether or not you're going to decide whether this is a right decision for you or not. I would say that the more resources, a.k.a. the more money you have, the better of an option this is. But the less money you have, you know, the, 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 yeah, the, the less likely I would say to do something like this and to always expect to go over budget. So let's say that, you know, uh, you're looking to get, you're, you know, you're retiring and you sell your home, you sell all your things, you're coming out here and your budget might be, I don't know, 4 million pesos. Well, guess what? You know what I mean? Like uh, buy a home that's like 2 million. All right. Um, and just expect for there to be a lot of uh, override. And that's just a home. I'm saying, you know, let's say you're buying some land, you're buying some this, you're buying a development, whatever it is. You know, there's going to be a lot of over budget. Again, you know, uh, what we were talking about in the video when that we did uh, with Dora and things and, uh, and David, you know, um, the, the, I think the property, the home, you know, the whole the property and the home and everything was two hundred thirty something. You know, that's two hundred fifty. No, so yeah, 250,000 US dollars, okay? And at the end of the day, once it was all said and done, it all came to around $400,000, okay? So just keep that in mind, you know what I mean? And when you're building and when you're doing things like this, it's gonna, it gets expensive quickly, all right? And even if in the, on a small scale, it's still going to be expensive. And there's a lot of things that you're going to be dealing with that uh, you might not be ready for. And uh, just make sure that if you're going to be buying something like this or investing in anything like this, that, you know, again, you know, you have certain basic needs at the very least taken care of you know whether it's like electricity roads water internet you know things that some of us don't even think about until it's too late um but like i was said you know like i was saying earlier you know, this is a this is a an area that is um very highly sought after these days um whether you're coming from another part of mexico or another part of the world or another part of spanish-speaking world especially um man you know this is a very highly desirable place and so with that being said um, you know, um, th th this this idea of uh, selling you land, selling you land development, selling you, um, you know, you know, all this. You know, what I mean, again, you know, um, a cheap investment um, that will pay high dividends in the future. This is being sold to a lot of people and a lot of Mexicans and a lot of other people around the world. So, you know, also don't forget that. You know, what I mean, there's a lot of people out there that are, you know. Um, they don't know what they're doing. They don't know what they're selling. They don't know what they're buying. And I could go on and on. I know a lot of people out there as well that, you know, they're selling a lot of these properties or a lot of these, you know, developments or a lot of these investments. And they don't know themselves that it's not going to work out. You know, they, they just think that it is. You know, they just they trust their employer. They trust, uh, you know, other individuals as well. But if you just do your due diligence, do a little homework and uh, you quickly realize that, you know, a lot of the land that they're selling you out there in the middle of the jungle, they can't sell you. It's like right now, imagine you're in the USA and they're trying to sell you uh, pieces of Glacier National Park or the Grand Canyon. You know, that kind of thing. You know what I mean? Or, you know, there are other, you know, parts of, uh, you know, there, there are pieces of land in Mexico called Ejidio land, which is land that is basically um, not, it's kind of like federal land, but it doesn't belong to the government. It's land that belongs to the government, but since, you know, the constitution is a little different out here, you know, like it's supposed to be in the U.S., but anyways... The land really belongs to the people. So the government just manages the land for the people. Meaning, like, um, there's tons of land that is called the Ejidio land that basically the government just manages for the people. But it does not belong to the government. It belongs to the people. 
and it's like communal land. So like, for example, there's big swaths of land all over the Yucatan, all over Mexico that is, you know, again, given to the people by the government. But that land is basically land that all the people in the surrounding area can use freely to, I don't know, um, a farm, to grow, to, again, they have to work together. It's a, it's a communal land. It's a community land that belongs to everybody. So anyways, there's a lot of this communal land that's all over the, the state, but it just happens to be jungle, and there's nobody out there, and there's no one really, you know, kind of like taking uh, um, ownership of this land, but it doesn't belong to anybody. It belongs to the people. But there's no people there yet. So anyways, there's a lot of people, there's a lot of other individuals out there that are using this, you know, as, an, as, as a tactic in order to sell you land that they can't be selling you to begin with. And uh, they can sell you the land. They can sell you everything, the idea, the whole thing. But once it comes to the point where they got to break ground to build something, they're not going to be allowed to legally on a federal level. Because it doesn't belong to them. It belongs to the people in the village. And so now you're going to be fighting with the people in the village over that land that they're not going to give to you for obvious reasons. Okay? Um, so just, I mean, just to keep that in mind. You know what I mean, like, uh, you know, that's a lot of that going on. You know, there's a lot of just, you know, again, fake phony coordinates. You know, hey, we're going to sell you X, Y, Z, yada, yada, yada. And they don't even have ownership of that. Um, a lot of people that can do a lot of scams out here. Um, and it's something you have to be very, very careful with. And, it's, it, and if you're going to be doing anything like that, you need to be armed with the right individuals, the right people, so that you yourself you know, again, will not fall into a trap, a trap, you know, or, uh, you know, again, a situation that, you know, you're going to be kicking yourself <clears throat> for years to come. Because again, <clears throat> sorry, again, like, um, there's a lot of um, YouTubers out there and a lot of other, you know, social media, people. there's just a lot of other people out there, influencers, whatever you want to call them that, you know, again, are Spanish, speak Spanish, you know, only have a Spanish YouTube channel, only have Spanish, uh, whatever. And, um, and they themselves, like I said, you know, there are a lot of people are looking into moving out here and a lot of people have been scammed, not just in this part of Mexico, but other parts of Mexico. But it's it's very easy to scam out here. And um, if you don't know how to protect yourself, you're going to be very sorry very quickly. All right. Pirate Pixie says, I'm ready to fight for the village people. Wait, which village people are we talking about? YMCA. And I, oh, no, wait, wait. In the Navy, right? If you're going to fight for them, right? So you're going to be in the Navy. Wait, wh wait, what village people are we talking about here again? Can you imagine you go out to a village and it's just a bunch of, uh, you know, village people literally, you know, doing in the Navy. Da, 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 just all day long. Bruh. <laughs> Comedy is not my thing, all right? I apologize. Again, Lambo writes the jokes here, all right? <clears throat> Got to get a new joke writer. Okay, so uh, Charles Expat says, "Do you think I could find a fully furnished apartment for fifteen, ten thousand pesos a month in Medellin?" Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Um, you can find the house for that part for that price. Um, Pirate Pixie says, "Yeah, all oh, people from the Mexican village." Oh, sorry. <laughs> Wait, hold on. What is it? Uh. Raul says, hi, Jose. I think it would be a good investment for me. I was born in Medina and I am retired and I am very well financially set. The only thing the other can handle in the heat. Yeah. So like I said, you know, I mean, there's tons of uh, these developments and these, uh, you know, these these uh, investments, you know, that are a really good idea, you know, like whether you're going to live in them or just, you know, again, hold it as an investment again for, you know, we talk about this on the channel many times, you know, a lot of Mexicans, you know, they're very smart. They're very well versed on financials. They know that they cannot trust the banks that they, you know, paper money is just paper money. Um, and so w with all that being said, you know, they put their money in solid things, whether it's gold or silver or properties and so that's why a lot of people you know even in other parts of mexico they're constantly looking into you know buying property but not just any property again imagine like uh, being able to buy a property in an area that is very highly you know um speculative in a sense and i'm sorry 
that is in a very speculative market, but it is a very high potential to make a lot of money. Because again, you can buy a property out here for, you know, again, you can buy a piece of land in the middle of nowhere, think about it, for $5,000 or less, or $1,000, and that land could, you know, get uh, 10x in value, you know, 10 times the value, uh, 15 times the value, five times the value, whatever. It's just gonna increase in value exponentially. Um, where a lot of people, when they buy land, it's just to protect their wealth, you know, just to kind of make sure that their their money, you know, their, their wealth, you know, stays put. But when you're doing speculative land investments, you know, like what you when you find it a lot in the, in the Yucatan, it's 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 not just to keep your money safe. No, no, it's to grow that money. And if you know what you're doing, you can make a lot of money out here in investments. You know, again, if you're into real estate and you know what you're doing, man, I'm telling you, you could this is a hot market. But if you don't know what you're doing and you're just coming out here and blindly just uh, you know throwing your money around, yeah, you're gonna be losing that money very quickly. So, but yes, Raul, you know, I, I totally agree with you. You know, like um, that's what I was looking into myself. Um, and I, again, you know, once I get money again, I'm broke as hell right now. But once, you know, once we get that money rolling again, yeah, 100 percent, we're going to get uh, start looking into that again. Um, but it's just that, you know, unfortunately, you know, we were filled more with disappointment that we couldn't get, um, you know, a, a property. Uh, but yeah, I mean, this area is going to be growing for decades to come, to tell you the truth. Forget about it, you know, uh, and we might be in a bubble right now and that bubble might burst and so on and so forth, you know, and in, 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 uh, when it comes to real estate in this region, but it's still going to keep blowing up. You know, that bubble might burst, but it's only going to be temporary. It's going to keep growing and growing and growing. So, you know, 100 percent, Raul, I agree with you. Um, of course, I, I, me said, OK, me in the chat. That's a nice, uh, nice name there. Anyway, so uh, he's, uh, me is asking. Uh, I've heard you can buy property from private people. Yeah, that's the only way to buy property is from private sellers. I don't know what other way to buy property is there. That's the only way to buy property is from a private seller, from a private individual. You know, if you're buying it from a real estate. Uh, if a real estate company is in the way or a real estate company is a middleman, a real estate company is representing the buyer, you're still, still um, a private sale. You know, all sales are private. You're not you're not buying uh, property from a public entity. You're not buying property from the public, uh, you know, meaning um, the Mexican government per se, which is the Ejidio land. Ejidio land is public property. So that's why you cannot buy that property. Um, so it has to be all private. There you go. See, look, the... the, the <laughs> De Debbie, Debiaka, Debbie says that she's going to buy Chichen Itza and live in it. There you go. There you go. You got the right idea. Oh. But that's what I'm saying. There's a lot of people out there, you know, like I said, they're just selling you the Ejidio land. And that's basically like selling you, uh, you know, property on Chichen Itza. You know, so you can go buy, you know, you can go live in Chichen Itza or something like that. It's like, no, nah, it's not going to, that's not how it works. But again, they can sell you anything and, you know, you can buy anything technically in Mexico. Um, it's not illegal, you know, like, again, they can sell you all of that. That what's illegal is, you know, actually breaking land. So what, what, how, okay. So why a lot of these individuals out there, um, do these scams is because they know that they're protected in court because again, they're selling you, um, the whole idea and then they can just play dumb in court and be like, Oh, I didn't know that you couldn't build there. Oh, well. And then the courts are, all right, you got to give the money back. Well, I don't got the money. I'm bankrupt. Oh, well. You know what I mean? Like that kind of thing. And then you got to like figure it out. But, you know, most people can kind of like, you know, buy their way out of it, um, especially if they're stealing a lot of money. Yeah, don't worry. You know, and Mexico's a different country. It's a different, you know, uh, situation. So. Well, yeah, let me see. But at the end of the day, you know, um, our real estate land developments in the Yucatan a good investment. Yes, they could be a great investment. They can be an amazing investment or they can be uh, disastrous investments. It all really just depends on you. Um, and uh, yes, of course, that could be said for any place on earth, but especially out here in Mexico um, and especially in this region right now, because again, Mexico, you know, they have a really, you know, they have a, a loose set of rules and regulations and how things are done out here. It's very loosey goosey. And most of the time you're going to find out that you're on the wrong side of the law. And if you get scammed, you're scammed and there's nothing you can do about it. Um, the judge is always going to side with the other individual because they're always going to be like, didn't you know any better? And it's really, really difficult to prove um, a scam.
and for you to get your money back, you know, from a scammer, um, because it's supposed to be your due diligence. You're supposed to be smart enough to not fall for the scam. Um, that's how things are done in Mexico. So that's number one. And then the number two reason is the fact that, again, this is a very, very, very hot market. Um, it's the middle of the jungle. So they can, they're basically just selling you pieces of the jungle. That, again, if you go visit any one of these pieces of land in the middle of the jungle they're trying to sell you, immediately you're going to be like, oh, yeah, no, what the hell am I doing here? What am I buying? You know what I mean? Like, what are you kidding me? Like, you know, again, I, I can sell you a piece of the moon. I can sell you a piece of the Amazon rainforest, right? You know what I mean? Like, go and live out there. Go ahead. You know, it's, do I really need to sell you a piece of land in the middle of the jungle for you to go live out there? No, I don't. All right? So just, you know, also remember that. <laughs> so LG says, Jose, is it difficult to resell your home? No, not really. I, I mean, it just all depends. You know what I mean, it depends on many factors. You know what I mean? Uh, but no, you know, not really. You know, if you're asking too much for your home... Maybe it is, probably, yes. Um, but this is a, a buyer and seller's market at the moment. Even though it is a bit of a bubble, it is still a very highly desirable market. So again, depends on your, your home, depends on what you're trying to sell, depends on what you're asking for, it depends on many factors. Uh, it's gonna depend on whether you're gonna sell it or not. Um, you know, if your house is deemed to be a good deal, you know, a good investment, you know, but a good deal, yeah, no, you'll be able to sell it very quickly. But if you're overpricing your property, you're probably never going to sell it. You know what I mean? Or, you know, probably going to take a very long time. Um, oh, that's a great question. Rocio Favela says, can you trust the realtors out there? Not really. Not really. The reality is, is that there's no uh, set of rules or no regulations. There's no nothing um, when it comes to real estate out here. So anyone can call themselves a realtor. Anyone can you know, pretend to be a realtor. Anyone can can do this job, okay? There's many foreigners that come out here, many expats that come out here on a tourist visa, and they're all of a sudden, they're real estate agents. Um, there's a lot of locals, you know, that are they call themselves real estate agents, and all they do is just go around the neighborhoods and, you know, look at people that are trying to sell their home, um, and they don't even know how to put it on Facebook, and then they're trying to act as a realtor and try to sell the home. So for example, let's say that you are grandma in, in the city, you know, just a regular typical grandma, and you want to sell your home for whatever reason, and you don't even know how to use Facebook or post it on Facebook or deal with any of that stuff. And so all of a sudden you're, um, you, all you do is just do the traditional way to sell your home. You just put a for sale sign and you just expect it to eventually find a buyer. Um, so what a lot of realtors fake realtors do or people that call themselves realtors you know they'll go around and they'll look at these properties and let's say that grandma is asking for one million pesos for the property so what these people will do is that they'll go out there all right on and they'll go on facebook they'll go on uh, on, on a lot of these websites you know that i've shown you guys that are on by the way you go to my website and you can find a lot of uh here, I'll show you real quick. I don't want to lose track of the conversation. But anyways, you know, go to my website, okay? And you can go right here where it says Free Mexico Resources. Click on there. And right there, you're going to find all these websites. But anyways, on Facebook, on these websites, you know, you're going to find a lot of properties that are being represented by a middleman, a third person. And so basically how it works is like this. Let's say me, I want to be a realtor. I can just go around the neighborhood. I can find a bunch of properties that are not listed and I can just take pictures of them, put them on Facebook, put them on these websites. Um, the people that are selling the home are selling it for a million. I can represent the home and sell it for two million, three million, whatever, and put it for sale. And then I have some dumb schmo like you, you know, reach out to me and then you want to buy the home and we negotiate to two million and I'll be like, yeah, don't worry. Boom, two million, great deal. You think it's a great deal? I got a, you know, awesome deal. And then I go to the owner and the owner was asking for a million. And you already know you're asking for a million. You're probably going to get less. Well, I go to the owner and I go, hey, guess what? I got a million for your home. I got your offer. So the owner's gonna be like, great. And then, you know, they'll sell the home, but they're really selling it to you. That's really selling it to the other person that's selling it for two. So basically, you know, a lot of people do that and all of a sudden they're making a million pesos just selling a, a, a home um, and being a middleman for another person. So like there's tons of, and there's tons of people that are scammers that are, you know, uh, using um, the fact that many people are coming out here um, like foreigners and they have no idea how the rules or regulations, how everything works out here. And then, you know, you come out here like a dumbass and you, you know, you look for someone like a realtor, you know, to help 
you know, help you find the home. You give them, you know, $50,000 and before you know it, they d disappear off the face of the earth. And you got, what are you going to do? You can't do anything about it. So, um, so like again, Don Ricky says, do real estate agents have to be licensed? No, they don't. Like I said, anyone can be a, a realtor. Anyone. My dog can be a realtor. Okay. So. Mm. Pirate, pirate says, um, I noticed, uh, USA real estate agencies like Century 21, Sotheby's, Remax, or in Mexico. I take it they're franchise subsidiaries. That's right. So that's exactly what they are. You know what I mean? Again, you, for anyone that knows anything about these real estates or anything about any of this stuff, you know what I mean? Um, you know, these companies, you know, they know what the situation is like out here. And, um, you know, some of you guys, you're doing your research like you're doing right now, which is listening to me, asking me these questions, you know, doing your due diligence. And so immediately you hear these things. You're like, oh, crap, I'm going to go with Century 21. I'm going to go with an actual real estate company. By the way, you can go with there's plenty of Mexican real estate companies that are, you know, very great, you know, awesome. But at the end of the day, that's what you're paying for. You're paying for security. You're paying for, you know, the fact that, hey, these are established uh, companies established places you know uh and um you know they're not gonna what you call they're not gonna just run away with your money so things like that you know what i mean so that's why you, you're looking for for that so so anyways so yeah so like um you know all, all, the thing is that you know if you're gonna buy a home through century 21 in mexico or you know remax or what have you well and guess what you know you're gonna be paying a lot more because you're really gonna be paying for that extra you know per service of you're gonna be represented by someone that's gonna you know again make sure to sell you the uh, an actual property and they're not scamming you you know this they're, they're not you know they're just charging you okay uh, extra for that you know um for that for the service that they provide it's as simple as that so I hope uh, hope that makes more sense. Um, but like, again, you don't have to go with Century 21 or Remax. You know, there's a bunch of other real estate companies that have a, a record, you know, like a track record of uh, selling homes out here. Um, Mexican companies, you know, you can go with them. But yes, you know, I, I, I you know, I highly recommend that. Obviously, if you're going to be doing something like that, that even if you, if you if you're, sorry, even if you're going to buy by owner, if you're going to go out there and you're going to look for the home and you're going to do all this and represent yourself, you still need a lawyer. You still need a notary. It's very different out here than it is in the USA. So, you, you know, you got to make sure that you uh you know you get with the right people so that you know again they're gonna steer you the right way and make sure to represent you correctly at the end of the day you are gonna need some sort of representation especially if you don't speak the language but even if you do speak the language you need proper rep representation and it's not a real estate agent per se it's more like a lawyer okay a real estate lawyer you know what i mean that's really who you need and eventually you're going to need a notary and i could go on and on so it's it's very different system out here and you and then you know if you're going to be doing anything uh like purchasing property you know doing any kind of real estate out here it's it's best if you uh you know become more well versed and educate yourself correctly on how it all works out out here because it's a very different system it's more you know loosey-goosey it's uh, anarchy for lack of a better description so uh, Neil Andrew says there is not a lot of information on expats buying land and building their own house. I imagine that is cheaper than getting a mortgage in the long run. Can you provide some costing insight on building? Yes, the, I, I did a video on it on Sunday. Again, you can just go to my YouTube channel. Okay, go to my YouTube page, and uh, the last video that I did. Okay, right here. Okay, you guys can see it. You know. Um, I actually answer that, talk about that in more detail and all that. Okay. So, you know, big shout out to David and Dora for, uh, allowing us in their home and, uh, allowing us uh, to interview, you know, them so that you guys can have as, you know, much information as possible when it comes to, you know, all of these things. So yes, this is live. It's live. <laughs> Mm. let me see so um but yeah but that's another thing too you know a lot of people are you know they a lot of people think that they can just come out here and get a mortgage 
<laughs> and get a home, you know? It's like, no. I mean, again, you're a foreigner in, in a foreign country. You know, you, you got to, like, establish credit. You got to, like, you know, there's a lot of things that you got to do before anyone even gives you a loan. So, yeah, I mean, unless you're bring, unless you get a private loan or some sort of loan in the USA or your home country and you bring that money over here to then purchase the home or do whatever, unless you do that, you know, by the time, you know, in order for you to establish you know, or start, you know, earning credit, make, you know, having credit for you to get a loan or any kind of anything out here is going to take a long time. So don't be coming out here thinking that, oh, I'm going to come out here on a tourist visa or a temporary residency and I'm going to get a, a mortgage like I do in the USA. No, that's not how it works out here either, you know? So, so that's not going to work. So if you're going to buy a home, you got to buy cash. It's as simple as that, okay? Um, there's no mortgage or anything like that. So you got to buy cash. So unless you got cash to buy, then, you know, you're going to be renting. Hmm. Da, da, da. Well, obviously, so uh, observation is like, what is it easier to rent or to buy? Obviously, easier to rent than to buy. <laughs> it's, you know, it's obviously a little more complicated when you were buying. Um, hmm. Neil Andrew says, yes, I watched that one. They made an addition to the house and a gated community made a great episode. I guess my question is, why did they not build it from scratch as compared to buying a home? It's like, why did they build it from scratch? Well, because that's what they wanted. They wanted to build it from scratch. They talk about it in the video that they lived in its central. They lived in other parts of the of, of the city. And um, this is what they wanted to do. They wanted to build from scratch. They didn't want to remodel or rebuild an older home. So... Exactly. You know, I'm glad Hanson, you bring up a, you bring up a great point. You know, you say amazing how expensive real estate is and considering how most of the purchases are cash purchases. And that's another thing, too, man. You know, like, I got it's like I, I find it so funny, you know, that so many people out there just think that Mexico's poor. No, someone's like you said, you know, someone's out there is buying those properties. That's why they have them at those prices. And it's not you. You know, no, you know, who the hell in the USA can really, again, unless you already own a home, you sold that home for major profit and you bring that profit down to Mexico um, to buy a new home. Unless you're in that position, who the hell can afford a home in, in the, you know, in Mexico coming from the USA? Um, you can't afford a home in the USA unless you have a mortgage and most of you guys can't even get a mortgage. So, you know, how can you afford a home out here? Now, granted, you know, you can buy a home similar to like the one I live in for, you know, like around uh, $60,000, $80,000, give or take, you know, I um, mean, it, it's a lot of work you got to put into it. I got to, I, I live in a very old home, you know, I live in a, a home that might be 50 years old or older. Um, so, you know, you got to put a lot of work into it. It's not the fanciest home in the world. It's, you know, it is what it is. Um, but if you're going to buy a brand new home or development, you're going to be paying U.S. prices a lot of times or close to it. And a lot of people are paying cash. Now, listen, there's a lot of pe Mexicans that get mortgages or they have, um, you know, they have a program called Infonavit, you know, which is a, a government program that Mexicans that work pay into so that they can have money so they can purchase a home and make it easier for them to own a home. Um, but again, when, when, we're not talking up to Mexicans here. Most of you guys watching are not Mexicans or Mexican citizens or anything like that. So that doesn't matter. You know what I mean, we're, we're, but anyways, long story short, a typical Mexican has a better, you know, opportunity or an easier, you know, chance or opportunity of buying a home, even though for a lot of Mexicans, it's also becoming very difficult to own a home as well. Not, not as easy as it used to be. Still, it's still a lot easier for a Mexican to buy a home or own a home than it is for an American these days. But this is also a reality of it. You know what I mean? Um, let's not forget that. And so, so yeah. Roger says, how can I get in contact with you? I would like to visit Merida and get in touch with you. Everyone wants to get in touch with me. I know. I get it. I understand. So if you want to get in touch with me, um, you can go to my website. Okay. All the information is in the description of each video and uh, everywhere. You know what I mean? Um, but anyways, go to my website. Okay. Here, I'll show you. Okay. You go to my website and all the information is there. You know, the email, how to reach to me and all that stuff. If you want a one-on-one -on -one consultation, you know, you want to do a one-on-one -on -one video call, you know, we can do that 
for a price. If you want to meet me in person, we can you know have a one-on-one -on -one, uh, personalized uh, in-person uh, consultation. We can also do that for a price. You know, so it's all there. You know what I mean? So you know, again, if you want to just ask me one question, you can also do that for a price. Again, you know, this is how we do these questions. You know, so again, shout out to David for asking me this question. Um, but how it works is that every single Thursday I go live and I answer three questions, okay, that you and the audience ask me. And how can you find out uh, how to ask me a question? Go to my website and uh, you click on the link here. It says personalized consultations. It takes you straight to this website, which is me explaining to you exactly how it works. But you simply write an email to me um, with what, whatever you need, you know, whether it's just asking one question um, and whether you want me to answer it in private, you know, through email or you want me to answer it through um, making a video. Um, and then depending on the complexity of your question it will depend on how much of a donation it's going to be. But if you don't want to do that, if you want to ask, if you want to have Sorry, if you have more than one question and you want to have a one-on-one -on -one meeting, again, there's a price for that as well. And we can have a one-on-one -on -one meeting. You can ask me as many questions as you want about whatever you want. Or if you want to meet me in person, there's also a, a fee for that. And we can, you know, arrange whatever it is you want out there, you or anyone in the audience, okay? Um, but that's how we keep the lights on, you know? That's how I get to feed my horse. I get to feed my dog. I get to feed myself and the wife okay um by providing extra services to you guys um but as you guys know anyone that watches this channel it's all free you know i got a gazillion videos you know talking about um so many topics um for free and you guys have access to all that for free um but again for anyone out there that wants a little bit more that's how you guys can do it. And uh, some of you guys just ask me simple questions because, you know, this is a, a fun way in which you can donate, you know, some money um, and get something back in return. Um, you know, look at it like buying a, a mug or a T-shirt um, where, you know, you donate something, you get back something in return. In this case, you're getting a personalized video and a personalized answer um, in a question form, okay? For, I mean, to your question. So, all right. Let me see. Let's go back to the chat. Do, 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 do. Neil Andrews says, are there any case studies on expats that got their Fidel Comiso renewed after 50 years? I have no idea. I, have no, what the f <laughs> I wonder how easy it is for that process. I have, no, I have no idea. I would highly suggest you, if you have a question like that, or you want a lot more detailed information on, on real estate matters, on, on income tax matters, on whatever, you know, on whatever one of these matters, um, I highly suggest for you to go to my website, okay? And here, let me show you again. On my website, just go, um, here's the homepage, okay? But on my website, just go to free Mexico resources, click on there, and um, you can just scroll down and you can find, um, I have interviews with Jose Novello, okay, Mexican lawyer specializing in real estate, taxes, business, immigration, and you can reach out to him directly. You can also watch the videos I did with him so you can, uh, you know, maybe get information from there, but you can reach out to him directly and he can help you out with all your needs, all your lawyer needs, and, uh, you know, when it comes to all these uh you know, again, real estate matters or business matters or taxes or immigration or whatever it is you need, okay? And uh, he's, the, he's the right guy for that, not me. Awesome, Roger, awesome. Henson says, I want to meet Lambo only. Needs to be, uh, yeah, that's right, that's right. If you want to meet Lambo, you can, we, can, we can arrange that as well, okay? Don't worry about it. Thank you, Roger. Shout out to you. Much appreciated. Thank you very much. Shout out to everyone. Shout out to Nil, Hanson, Roger, um, Observation Compete, Complete. Um, what else we got? Robert, Don Ricky, Todd, Pirate, Teresa, Chris, Deb, LG, Rocio, Piet Pedro, all of you guys. I see Raul. Shout out to everyone out there. By the way, I hope you guys are enjoying all of the content. Hope you guys are enjoying um, all the videos. I hope you guys enjoy these Thursdays. Um, where we get together um, and do these live streams. Um, you know, we do three questions. Um, I'm, I'm really happy to hear that you guys are really enjoying these. You know, I'm really happy to see <laughs> that you guys are actually enjoying these a lot and uh, makes me very happy and makes me want to do more of them. So I'm glad, um, you know, these are, these resources are, are, you know, helping so many people out, out there. So shout out to you and shout out to everyone out there. Um, 
again, you know, if you guys have any questions, you guys want me to answer next Thursday, every single Thursday, we answer three questions once a month on a Thursday. I go live for three hours and I'm just answering all your questions, you know, rapid fire style, you know, and uh, we, we like to do that as well. So, but yeah, I think that's it. I think this uh, episode has run its course. I think we've already answered this question thoroughly. If you guys want to know more information, you guys want to talk more about this, please feel free to, you know, leave a comment down below. Please feel free, again, if you want more information, you know, ask me a question, write me an email. Um, Please, again, feel free to uh, join the conversation, whether it's in the community chat, whether it's in the um in the community section of the of the channel um again you know um, when we do the live stream so on and so forth you know thank you so much for everything thank you so much for participating showing up being here and uh, you already know the deal guys if you like this kind of content don't forget to please like please subscribe please share please hit the bell icon but more importantly than anything else please stay awesome check out all these other videos all these other live streams all the other playlists you know where i answer all of your questions i mean where i have all your other questions answered and so on and so forth and uh that's it Time to get out of here. I got things to do. So appreciate you guys. Love you guys. And I'll see you guys next Thursday and every Sunday. Remember, every single Sunday, I drop a brand new video. So see you guys on Sunday. See you guys on Thursday. Stay tuned to the channel so you know you guys know exactly when I go live and what questions I'm going to be asking and so on and so forth. And again, go to my website so you can find out all that information as well, and also have all the free resources um, at your disposal. Because again, I make a lot of videos, I have a lot of content out there. So again, that's why I make I made this website, so it'll be a lot easier for you to find certain pieces of information and so on and so forth. So thanks again for hanging out with me today. Love you guys, big hugs. Have an awesome rest of your day. Have an amazing weekend, and I'll see you guys on Sunday. And I'll see you guys here next Thursday. Thanks again, guys.